Spencer and Yanni back here. Before we get to trivia, uh, we need to follow up on the promise that we made on Monday's episode of Meat Eater. We are going on tour, and we are now going to give you those details of when and where we're going. Giannis, tell folks what they need to know about this live tour. Well, uh, most importantly, who's going to be there? Sure. Steve, you, because you're going to be running trivia. Mm -hmm. Myself, that's the core. We're going to do all the shows. And we're also going to have friends and special guests from all the different regions that we pop in. They're going to come and join us. Um, It's going to be a good time. We're going to tell some stories, have some laughs, and obviously uh, play some trivia. From uh, The dates are December 6th through December 15th. Locations, listen up. Denver, Colorado, Kansas City, Missouri, Davenport, Iowa, Kalamazoo, Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, shout out to my homies, Cleveland, Ohio, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we're wrapping it up in Philly. Now, there's a limited number of VIP tickets available for every venue. It's only 75. So if you want to hang out, tell hunting stories, get some selfies with the crew, Get those VIP tickets. Yeah, last time we did this, those VIP tickets were gone in hours. So if you want one of those, you probably need to purchase like soon after you hear this. Now to get your tickets, you go to themeateater.com backslash events. Uh, The tickets go on sale at noon today, local time, and you use the pre-sale code HUNT when you purchase. That's H-U-N-T. Tickets for the general public go on sale on Friday. Again, you can get this information at the meateater.com backslash events. Me, Yanni, Steve, plus others coming to your city. Come join us. It's going to be fun. That's right. We hope to see you there. It's a meat eater podcast. Welcome to Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins. I'm your host, Spencer Newarth, and today we're joined by Giannis Putellis, Brody Henderson, Randall Williams, Chester Floyd, Maddie Lehman, Tressa Croker, Corey Calkins, and Seth Morris. This is a 10-round quiz show with questions from Meat Eaters for Verticals, which are hunting, fishing, conservation, and cooking. And there's a prize. Meat Eater will donate $500 to the conservation organization of the winner's choosing. And for the stat of the week this week, we're looking at what might be my favorite stat yet. Here it is. We are going to donate $1 from every board game sale to conservation projects. That means that your purchase of Meat Eater Trivia will help fund things like land access and wildlife habitat. We wanted to make sure that the product lived up to its name as the only board game where conservation always wins, and this is how we're doing it. By the end of the year, between the donations made on the show and the donations made through board game sales, we'll have given nearly $50,000 to projects that benefit hunters, anglers and wildlife so it's truly the only game show and the only board game where conservation always wins meat eater trivia the board game will be available this fall Woo! one dollar per sale (laughs) fantastic to conservation that's sweet here's our zero percenter question of the week which tests how much knowledge players have retained from previous games this question was from episode 386 the topic was cooking and nobody got it right what day of the week is thanksgiving in canada who knows it? Monday. Monday. Monday, that's right. Now, how did we know it now, but not like six months ago? Well, you read the answer six months ago, Sure. Right? You remembered it now. Okay. <laughs> Got some Canadian friends. Yeah. I didn't even know Canada had a Thanksgiving. <laughs> did you miss it last time, or did you know it and you I, didn't play? I think I missed it last time. I think I was here. Well, it was a zero percenter, so yeah. well, I everybody missed it who was playing. Again, the correct answer was Monday. The incorrect answers were Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Do you know if Thanksgiving is as big in Canada as it is in the U.S.? I don't. I think they celebrate similar, uh, similarly, a lot of family and a lot of food. Um, and it's always the second Monday of, is it October, maybe? Well, that was my question. So it's not the same time of year either. No. no. I mean, kind of. Close. But, but a different month. Yeah, I don't think it's even in November. It might is have it that based wrong. on the same... You're asking me Same too many thing. things There's about probably Canada. Be quite a few emails <laughs> coming Canada, across the border. Tell us about your Thanksgiving. Uh, do they eat turkey and stuff in Spencer? Come on. Yeah, we'll find out. Uh, that'll be a future housekeeping. Now, so. for the housekeeping portion of today's show, I want to talk about our schedule for the next few months. By the middle of October, I hope to have nearly every episode recorded that we'll release through the end of the year. 
That means that future housekeeping may be on a significant delay. If there's a correction to be made, I promise I'll get to it. But in some cases, it may not happen until 2024. Now, this also means that we've already recorded the Meat Eater Trivia Championship. It's a four-episode tournament that will be released in November and December, where we crown a champion of Meat Eater Trivia for 2023. There are 40 questions and 20 players, and by the end of the tournament, there will be just one winner. Everyone in this room participate in the tournament in some way without spoiling anything. What can we say about the tournament uh, to make people excited? Dude, it comes down to the last question. Okay, that's There, there that's was a good. lot of shouting. There was. Episode <laughs> three well, potentially had the most tension. That Quite an episode, a bit of shouting. Boy. The most shouting I've lot, heard. There was lots of ups and downs for some people. <laughs> uh-huh. yes, the championship was just such a blast. Uh-huh. It was, it was a blast. This There'll be a few good. corrections, I bet, in episode two. <laughs> I hope not. I hope I, we talk about it on on, uh, on the tournament in the intro. Um, but we had some fact checking that went in beforehand to make sure that uh, all of our ducks were in a row. The tournament comes out later this year. Spencer, can you tell everyone what you told me? Um, why why you mm. need to have all the episodes recorded? By so the, I can go hunting. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> now the Shelby Index for, today, for today's round is a four, so our winner should get eight correct answers. And with that, we're on to the game of trivia. Play the drop, Phil. <clears throat> Look, I need to know what I stand to win. Everything. How's that? You stand to win everything. Question one, the topic is woodsmanship, and as always, this will be multiple choice. This first great question comes to us via Chris Blair. According to the Colorado Parks and Wildlife, 95% of berries that are this color are poisonous. Is it red, green, white, or blue? Again, this information is via the Colorado Parks and Wildlife. They say that 95% of berries that are this color are poisonous. Is it red, green, white, or blue? The room has been slow to answer. Yanni in Yanni fashion wants to get a read on the rest of the room before he comes up with his own answer. What did you gain uh, from watching the faces of your competitors, Yanni? I actually wasn't. I was just going... Just going through the colors in oh, okay. my head and thinking of berries that I know <laughs> what I'm yeah, in those <laughs> colors. Now Red. this is I've got it narrowed down to two. Okay. You're gonna ask me something I don't have the answer to, Randall. You're gonna be like, well, "Is this in the world? Is it North America?" No, I was the, whether the ninety-five, yeah, ninety-five percent of berry, like species number of species that have berries of this color. I, I don't know. This is, it was just, uh, it's not going to change my answer. No. I just wanted to, I think it's safe to assume <laughs> that this is definitely in the Rocky mountains and probably just in North America in general. Uh, but they say 95% of berries that are this color are poisonous, red, green, white, blue. It's a high percentage, very high percentage. Does everybody have an answer? No. Red, green, white, blue. We are waiting on Brody and Giannis, our two competitors who have lived in Colorado, where this information comes from. <laughs> A lot of berries out there, Spencer. A lot Spencer. of berries. <laughs> Red, green, white, or blue. Is anybody confident? It does not appear so. Uh, yes, no. Okay. <laughs> Seth answered it quickly. Kind of, but not really. <clears throat> Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Tressa saying red, Maddie saying red, Chester saying white, Randall saying white, Seth saying white, Corey saying white, Giannis saying white, Brody saying white. They got it. The correct answer is white. Wow, I sweat in that one. They say that you should avoid almost all berries that are white or yellow with 95% of them categorized as poisonous. About 50% of berries that are red are poisonous, but only 15% of berries that are black or blue are poisonous. And of that 15%, about one-third of them can be fatal, and the other two-thirds will just make you sick. 
Can anybody name a white berry? No, oh, berries. That's, that's probably Rouse love. Oh, that's good. Poison ivy. Yeah, that's what I was. That's what almost yeah. made me not pick it because I was thinking, well, snowberries. They're still around right can't, now. Can't be poisonous. No, because there's not a ton of them. That's probably why 95 percent are poisonous. Question two. The topic is hunting. The eight top-selling shotgun shells from Shields are all in this gauge. Again, the topic is hunting. The eight top-selling shotgun shells from Shields are all in this gauge. Shotgun shells from Shields. That's a good theater mm, warm-up. You can uh, try that one out. Yeah. There you go, Phil. Red leather, yellow leather. Selling shotgun shells from Shields. Yeah. <laughs> Phil, do you have any theater updates for us? I just started rehearsal for the next show. Yeah? Which yeah. It comes out when? Uh, October 20th, it opens. And so auditions show. are closed. Is this then. the? Yeah, is... sorry, Randall. I, I put a good. I put a good word in for you, but they didn't seem. You got the. You, you shared my tape with them. Uh, I did. Yeah. yeah you got to tell us what show. I'm singing the Pizza Bagel song. Yeah. That was his audition. Yeah. And so it's it's not a musical. It's an old like 1930s like screwball comedy that still holds up pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, called You Can't Take It With You. Uh, but Phil's leaving out the coolest detail. There are only two people in the whole show. Oh, that's that's a different one. Oh, no. a different one. I'm that, sorry. That okay. one's in February. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Auditions, Have you ever done a one-man show, Phil? still open for never. that one. <laughs> and I never will. <laughs> a what show? A one-man. Oh. Nobody wants to see that. Phil, how big of a part do you have? Oh, it's it's pretty big. I mean, there's but there are no bigger, small, small bi parts. Bigger small than uh, what you did for... Uh, what did we come see you Christmas in? Carol? Yeah. Yeah, Christmas it's bigger Carol. than that what, It's two people, you said? No, no, that's the, the February yeah. show. Oh, that's the February sorry, show. I, I muddied big, the waters. Big, huge, great cast for this October <laughs> I was going to say, he has yeah. at least 50 uh, Top-selling shotgun, yeah, shotgun shells from shotgun Shields. Yeah, shotgun shells from Shields. <laughs> yeah, here's the question one more time. It is question two. The eight top-selling <laughs> shotgun shells from Shields are all in this gauge. Does everybody have an answer? Yes. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Tressa saying 20. Maddie saying 12. Chester saying 12. Randall saying 12. Everyone else in the room said 12. They got it. The correct answer is 12. I was waiting for a surprise there. According to a 2019 article, the three most popular shotgun gauges in America are 12, 20, and 410 in that order. This is reflected in the ammo offerings from Midway USA with 372 offerings in the 12 gauge compared to 136 in 20 gauge and 39 in 410. Question three, the topic is public lands. This next great question comes to us via Tony Estrada. What state is home to Sam Houston National Forest and Davy Crockett National Forest? Question three, the topic is public lands. What state is home to Sam Houston National Forest and Davy Crockett National Forest? Spencer, did you tell us what the uh, Shelby, index Shelby Index is for? Winner should get eight. Lately, a few times in the last couple months, we've had some players flirting with perfect games, but it has not happened yet this year. Maybe this is the round that we get one. Oh, that'd be nice. What if it's not you, though? No, that wouldn't be nice. <laughs> okay, Randall just wants to... Because that would I, would I would have lost to sure. that point. He just wants conservation to win. Uh, oh, yeah. So then, yeah, we double the donation. Here's the question again. What state is home to Sam Houston National Forest and Davy Crockett National Forest? Brody and Yanni, Seth and Randall appear to know it. Chester, how about you? Ooh, do you I don't know, know about one? that. Mm. Do I, I know it? To have an answer. <laughs> I just picked oh, okay. a state. <laughs> okay. okay. Gave them too much credit. Chester, what do we have for lunch today? Muscles. <laughs> Rotten <No>. muscles. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good story. <laughs> it's not that great. Last time Chester had to leave the room to release a burp uh, because he had canned mussels with blue cheese for lunch. I mean, if Seth, wa if Seth wants to tell it, he can tell it. But oh, what's the good story? I Wait, there's a different good story? Chet and I went to <laughs> for lunch. I think we need to blank Wait, that out. Today? This yes. could be a lot okay. just, just a couple. Uh, yeah, we might an, need to Under an hour ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> but on the way home. He almost shit his pants. Yeah. <laughs> I think, <laughs> yeah, I think we will bleep that. Out. I, <laughs> to the point where I oh, had man. before parking, I had to stop and let him out <laughs> at the front, and then I, <laughs> and then I went and parked my truck. And you and you're pretty it sure happens. it's from the. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> happens to the best of us. It so. does. Uh, yeah. So that took like a what, a solid twenty minutes, or maybe not <laughs> solid, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's something amazing. I saw that uh, the owner of this place we're talking about, that Phil is going to bleep out, was recently posting in like a community Facebook group, saying something like, "We're under new ownership. We're looking forward to uh, working with you. We'd love to cater events, um, but mm. I think I'll avoid them now." Well, yeah, just. <laughs> Chester, is this just an everyday thing, or <laughs> only when we play trivia? Um, it's not. Oh, a, quit it's, picking on Chester. It's not an everyday what thing. What state is home to Sam Houston? <laughs> I'm just. I, 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 I'm fine, I just, so it's not. I don't think it's. The, I, I just. Okay. His fault. You know, I. <laughs> we know Chester. I don't and, hide anything. So, sure. You know, it's in in the high school, is. the like a uh, football game day, um, like I would get sick to my stomach. I think that was a common sentiment that other players had. Maybe it's what trivia does to you. Just makes you nervous. No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> does everybody have an answer? I'm gonna change mine. Yes, stress can we? Oh, last minute change oh. from Giannis. Ooh. Our coach straight up told us Chester that he would get diarrhea every game day. Really? Yes. So maybe maybe that's what we're working with here. Hmm. Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Tressa saying Texas, Maddie saying Texas, Chester saying Mississippi, Randall saying Texas, Seth saying Tennessee. Corey saying Texas, Giannis saying Arkansas, he crossed out Texas, Brody saying Texas. We have a correct answer in the room. It's Texas. Oh, Folks did pretty well. Should have took the clue of Houston, right? That's right. Both yeah, national forests are about 160,000 acres and are located 30 miles from each other in East Texas. Each forest was established in 1936 and is used for logging, grazing, hunting, fishing, hiking, and more. Each man played an important role in the Texas Revolution, which explains why towns, cities, counties, streets, and public lands are named after them in the state. Got to remember, gotta pretty remember the Alamo. There you go. They got to be pretty small national forests. 160,000 acres. Um, Combined? Wasn't no, Dave each. Crockett from so town. maybe oh, that's not too it's, small. it's sizable. Fought in the Alamo. Question four, the topic is cooking. The Food Network describes this as, quote, Japanese breadcrumbs made from steamed crustless loaves of bread. Some quick answers in the room. The most confident our players have looked. The Food Network describes this as, quote, Japanese breadcrumbs made from steamed crustless loaves of bread. This may be a 100 percenter. Crustless loaves, so they cut off the crust. I I don't know if it's they bake <laughs> it and prevent crust from forming, or if they cut I don't the crust know if off. That's possible. <laughs> Would that be possible? Baking something that didn't have a crust, right? Or if it's steamed, maybe mm. so. Yeah. Mm. Does everybody have an answer? Yeah. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Tressa saying panko, Maddie saying tempura. Chester saying panko, Randall and Seth and Corey and Giannis and Brody saying panko. They got it. The correct answer is panko. The Food Network says the benefit of using panko is that it's flakier, crunchier, and lighter than traditional breadcrumbs. This makes it a popular choice for fried foods. If you want to learn how to cook with panko, then check out Steve Rennell's recipe for turkey schnitzel or Jenny Wheatley's recipe for walleye tacos on TheMeatEater.com. Corey, I hope you're not looking at pictures of breadcrumbs on that phone. He's looking at some panko crusted <laughs> elk. Yeah, looking at uh, pictures of the giant bull he just killed, which he thinks might go over 300 inches. By yeah, one inch. One. Oh, a different. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well done, Corey. Question five. The topic is fishing. This next great question comes to us via Chris Blair again. Mm. What fishing brand is known for products like the Flicker Shad and Power Bait? Again, a very confident room. What fishing brand is known for products like the Flicker Shad and Powerbait? Seth, Chester, Brody already have their answer. Giannis just joined them. That Flicker Shad is one of Chester's favorite baits. Oh, really? I like that one, too. Okay. Sure is a good one. Thanks right, for Chet? the hint. <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> He's always like, gotta stop and get a couple Flicker Shads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and Powerbait, too. Yeah. <laughs> What fishing brand is known for products like the Flicker Shad and Power Bait? <clears throat> Tressa and Maddie, I think we're waiting on you. Ready? 
Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Tressa without an answer. Maddie saying Rapala. Chester and Randall and Seth saying Berkeley. Corey without an answer. Giannis and Brody saying Berkeley. They got it. The correct answer is Berkeley. Berkeley was founded in 1937 in Spirit Lake, Iowa. The company began when 16-year-old Berkeley Bedell used money from his paper route to start the business. His first products were hand-tied flies that he made out of the hair from the family dog and feathers from the family chickens. Chet, did you catch that big walleye on a flicker shed? I did. Oh, yeah. what color was it? It was like a, a purple and white with a little chartreuse mm-hmm. in it. If, if he would have had it Jointed. officially measured and weighed, it would have been a potential Montana state record. Man, Chester, what size flicker shed was it? Do they go like the three five seven route? Is that how they size their? I I honestly, I don't know. Okay, I just look at the caught the big one though. Yeah, I I don't know what one it was. Phil, we are Sorry. halfway through the game of trivia. Give us a scoreboard update. Yeah, we've got Tressa and Maddie with two points apiece, and then Chester, Corey, Giannis, and Seth all have four points and tied up. Two perfect games are Brody wow. and Randall. Jeez. Can you believe it? Okay. Sons of bitches. Brody and Randall. Perfect games. The only game show where Randall and <laughs> Brody always win. <laughs> Question six. That's funny, Seth. The topic <laughs> is biology. <laughs> this eight-letter word is a synonym for tadpole and describes a frog that's in a larval stage. This is not going to break up the perfect game for Brody, but Randall doesn't look confident. The topic is biology. Here's the question. This eight-letter word is a synonym for tadpole and describes a frog that's in a larval stage. Brody is the only person that's come up with an answer. Hmm. Brody, how'd you know it? Oh, I I feel like when you... uh, (laughs) When you hear the answer, you're going to know it. Oh, okay. (laughs) <laughs> I, I like. Yeah, I can't say any more. Uh, when you I'll see when later. you see Brody's answer, you're gonna know it. That's yeah. that's all he's all he's got. <clears throat> he may be the only one that comes up with an answer. This eight letter word is a synonym for tadpole and describes a frog that's in a larval stage. This is question six. The room is stumped. Stumped. Baby frog. <laughs> Man, I feel go. like when you read this question, I was like, I have to know this. But uh-huh. I can't. you do, you do. It's in there. And when he reveals it, you're gonna yeah, go, you're gonna be- Duh. Ah, shit. What It's like it? every question ever. Spencer, these are the ones where I like you to move on to. to mm-hmm. does, does everyone have an yeah. answer? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't enjoy the chit chat. Huh? There's a real lack of answers in the room right now. Brody's a lot of blank still boards. The only one to write something down. I have I have an answer written down. Okay. I'm not confident. Okay. Does it have eight letters? It does. Did you have to misspell it to get there, you think? Or is it not okay. to the best of my knowledge? Okay. This eight letter word is a synonym for tadpole. It's a good way to Describes go a frog that's in a larval stage. Chester just can't had something bounce. Seth into his is head. taking a hangman oh. approach. He is gritted out where each letter I needs stole to go. I Corey. Oh, okay. <laughs> I might steal his answer, too. <laughs> Eight-letter word that's a synonym for tadpole. Is this a technical or a colloquial Come term? on, let's go. Not giving you any help? Uh, no. Nope. I don't even know. Not eight. Mm. It's not eight letters. <laughs> the people without ah. answers, are you going to come up with an answer? No, not in the time that we have. Okay. Maddie and Tressa are writing. When they're done, we will reveal answers. Seth, are you ready? Yep. Maddie, Tressa, go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Tressa saying minnows. Oh, yeah. Maddie saying tadpole. Chester without an answer. Randall saying polywog. Damn Seth you, Randall. Saying <laughs> what? small guy. Small guy. Small guy. Corey <laughs> saying little fella. Giannis without an answer. <laughs> Brody saying polywog. They got it. The correct answer is polywog. I feel like if you had asked that in a kid's version of the trivia, the whole room would have They would have known it, yeah. How how would that go? I don't know. I just feel like it's I feel like it's like, a rhyming. Yeah. It's like in a nursery rhyme or something. <laughs> yeah. Also, who can like, forget the Pokemon polywag? 
Thank you, Phil. Me, That's Phil. We on. got you here. <laughs> the Merriam-Webster Phil, definition. I've never known any Pokemon. I'd have to encounter that term before I forgot about it. The Merriam-Webster definition of polywog is just tadpole. You can spell polywog with either an I or a Y. Both of our players who got it right went with the Y route. Western Oregon University describes the four stages as of a frog as being an egg, then tadpole or polywog, then froglet, then frog. Question seven. The topic is public lands. This is our listener question of the week, which was won by Elena Watts for sending this great question. Elena is going to get a book signed by Steve. If you want a chance to win our listener question of the week, then send your question to trivia at the com. I feel like earlier uh, you had some submitted questions, but they didn't get any prizes. Yeah. Well, oh, there's only one question of the week. Oh. And that person is the only person who gets a prize. So earlier when you said we got this question from Brian so-and-so. They just get a shout-out. That is their prize, Yanni. Uh-huh. Don't have enough prizes to go around for everyone. But we appreciate everyone who sends in questions. And if you send in a great one, you may win like Elena. Here's a question. Located in Maryland's Catoctin Mountain Park, this place has served as a secluded presidential retreat since 1942. Brody has an answer. Randall, do you have an answer as well? I do. Okay. Brody and Randall know it. The rest of the room does not. Po- the topic is public lands located in Maryland's Catoctin Mountain Park. This place has served as a secluded presidential retreat since 1942. Hmm. Seth is joining Randall and Brody with an answer. Seth, do you know it? Uh, hmm. Maybe. We'll see. Corey, do you know it? Yeah. Phil, would have you gotten that last question right because of the Pokemon Poliwag? Yeah. You would have gotten it. Yeah, well, okay. well Poliwag, it's got the very distinct kind of like uh, tadpole-looking tail. Sure. But when it inv- evolves into Poliwhirl, <laughs> it loses the tail and gets like weird gloved hands ah, for some reason. Doesn't make any sense. Metamorphosis. Yeah, but... it's a metamorphosis. <laughs> Here's the question again. Delightful. Located in Catoctin Mountain Park, this place has served as a secluded presidential retreat since 1942. Does everyone who's going to come up with an answer have an answer? Yanni? Uh, Let me write something down. Okay. Chester? Tressa? Okay. When Yanni is done, we will flip over the boards. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Tressa without an answer, Maddie without an answer, Chester without an answer. Randall saying Camp David. Seth saying Carnegie Third. Estate. Yeah. Corey saying Camp David. Giannis saying Monticello. Brody saying Camp David. The correct answer is Camp David. I was about to write down Camp Randall. <laughs> Would have been good. Camp Randall Stadium. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every president since Franklin D. Roosevelt has used Camp David as a place for rest and relaxation. Although it's within park boundaries, the presidential retreat is close to the public. The camp has a presidential cabin, a dozen guest cabins, a pool, hot tub, fitness center, bowling alley, pool tables, horseshoe pits, skeet range, tennis court, basketball court, chapel, golf hole, and more. Question eight. The topic is conservation. Which state that touches the Pacific Ocean has the most endangered species? We'll get a scoreboard update from Phil after this. Again, the topic is conservation. Which state that touches the Pacific Ocean has the most endangered species? Seth, what enabled you to come up with Camp David there? Long after our other two players who got it right had I, it. Just, I didn't come up with Camp David. Oh, I'm sorry. Corey did. Corey, you got that right. I did. How do, how do we know Camp David? Dude, this is a hard one. I think I've answered this a couple times. I watched the news. Okay, that's you're right. That's uh, that's a good way to get questions right. You're Brody tuned in for the Camp David what Accords news do you in watch? 1990. <laughs> Big NPR guy. There you go. That's Can't watch that one, though. Can you? Well, you listen, li- to, listen NPR. to NPR, right? Oh, yeah, you know, like watch and hear. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like watching the evening news is not a thing anymore. Like when I grew up hanging out at my grandparents, like that was a thing every night. Sure. I'd have to sit through the evening news until we could watch something entertaining yeah, to and me. Yeah, then Wheel of Fortune comes on. Yeah, after. or whatever. And now this is like not a thing. <laughs> Here's the question again. Which state that touches the Pacific Ocean has the most well, endangered species? Brody has declared this a hard one. 
Does everybody have an answer? Randall, how do you feel about your answer? Oh, I hate it. We're not supposed to talk about a perfect game, but we're going to talk about I a perfect game. You and Brody both have a perfect Ooh. game going. That's why I might roll the dice on this, this one. This could separate them. Which state that touches the Pacific Ocean has the most endangered species? The Randall Pacific is changing one, That's his the answer. one on the left side of the map, right? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Depends which way you're holding the map, Giannis. <laughs> I've seen that lately. There's like this new thing in cartography, like popular cartography, where they like to like spin mm. the world and make you look at uh, continents and places, in, 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 you know, from different angles. Which is good. Why do we always look at it with north up? Why, you know, why is that? Spencer, Keep what do you think simple. about that? Does it bother know. you when you see a map that's south up? Yeah, of course that would bother me. <laughs> Who wouldn't that bother? <laughs> I don't know. I. I there's, I've been seeing it around. Does everybody have an answer? <laughs> mm. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Tressa saying California. Maddie saying California. Chester saying California. Randall saying Ooh. California. Seth saying California. Corey saying Hawaii. Yana saying California. Brody saying Hawaii. The correct answer is Hawaii. God. Brody got it right wow. as well as Corey. I just changed it. Hawaii actually mm. has the most endangered species in the country at 484. For the other states that touch the Pacific, California has 287, Oregon has 47, Washington has 32, and Alaska has 8. Phil, we have two questions left. Give us a leaderboard update. Sure thing we have. Tressa, Maddie, Seth, Giannis, and Chester. Uh, well, they're all out of the game. I don't know where I was going with that. But <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> then Phil. we've got Corey with six points, Randall with seven, and Brody with eight. Question nine. The topic is Still fishing. in it, Corey. This next great question comes to us via Jared Hatcher. Mic. What is the name of a landlocked sockeye salmon? This is question nine. The topic is fishing. What is the name of a landlocked sockeye salmon? Randall, how close were you to putting Hawaii on that last I one? had Hawaii on my board for about 90% mm -hmm. of the, uh, the the time between the question and the answer. <laughs> and I erased it at the very last uh, moment and changed to California. And Brody, how close were you to not putting Hawaii on that question? Mm, so why close. from the beginning for you? Here's the question again. It's question nine. What is the name of a landlocked sockeye salmon? Randall, I see you're uh, hosting an episode coming up here pretty soon. That's right. That's correct. How's that coming? Uh, it's going very well. Just coming up with questions that I would know mm -hmm. the answer to. There you go. So that I can have a smug sense of self-satisfaction at the very end of the uh -huh. episode, provided that no one else gets a perfect game. Got it. <laughs> Does everybody have an answer? <laughs> you have any bones in there for the normal folk? I might put in a couple weird ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Randall episode <laughs> is uh, about a month away, but we're going to do the second every ep second ever episode where I'm not hosting. Is everybody ready? I'm going to play. That's right. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Tressa saying Atlantic Salmon. Maddie saying Coho. Chester saying Kokanee. Randall saying Kokanee. Seth saying King. Corey saying Kokanee. Giannis saying Kokanee. Brody Saying kokanee, the correct answer is kokanee. It's believed that the divergence between sockeye salmon and kokanee salmon happened about 15,000 years ago. Biologists speculate the newly formed lakes and rivers from glacier water convinced some groups of salmon to quit migrating to the ocean. Although sockeyes and kokanee sometimes spawn in the same place at the same time, they will not interbreed. Who's caught a kokanee in here? Anyone? Were they all in Montana or somewhere else? Colorado. Oh. Are there a lot of places in Colorado that have them? Mm -hmm. Are they native? No. Yeah. No, Montana they stock has those a few. things all over the place. Montana has a few places, though, with native kokanees, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe I feel the, like the far like northwest, northwest corner yeah. of the state. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Question 10. We have Brody with the perfect game. Randall is one question behind him. They're the only players left, right, Phil? Yes. Perfect game on the line. The topic is cooking. According to a 2022 study, 
This store sells the second most groceries in America. What's wrong, Giannis? D doesn't seem to quite fit it's into a our question. four verticals. Sure, we always talk about knowing where your food comes from. This is according to a 2022 study. This store sells the second most groceries in America, and this is based on dollars, not weight or mm. something like that. It's based on dollars. According to a 2022 study, this store sells the second most groceries in America. Perfect game is on the line for Brody. It would be the first perfect game, I think, since our Christmas episode oh, wow. of 2022. Let's see if he can pull it off. Brody, how do you Fresh. feel about your answer? Not, I, not great. I'm cheering for you. I want it to happen. Normally, I'd lean towards having a tiebreaker, but I would like to just double our donation instead. Does everybody have an answer? So you, <laughs> you have a preferred outcome? I do have a preferred outcome. Right now, yes. I would like to. Hey, sure. When's this episode going to air? Sure, how next I feel week. about that. And like, like literally next. It's the like next per, episode that's mm -hmm. airing, yeah. The, the host should remain impartial, right? That's my <laughs> understanding of how these things work. It's Brody, just the best if, practice. If you, if you win, you got to donate it to the Vale Bighorn, because did you hear? They finally got a number for the land, and uh, they got a big $2.5 million fundraising thing that's going to hey, kick off here about it. in the next couple days. But I don't want to jinx myself yet. Mm -hmm. Let's get there first. Does everybody have an I'm answer? I'm just putting that out there I'm, to I'm the universe. I'm feeling really good about my answer, okay. even though it doesn't matter. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Tressa saying Whole Foods, mm. Maddie saying Walmart, Chester saying Costco, Randall saying Chester. Walmart, Seth saying Walmart, Corey saying Walmart, Giannis saying Walmart, Brody saying Walmart. The correct answer is Costco. Damn it. Chester. Oh. Chester got it right. Brody wins the game. He doesn't get the Brilliant, perfect Chester, game, Brilliant. but he wins with nine correct answers. It's right. estimated that last year in the United States, 25% of all groceries were purchased at Walmart. That's followed by Costco at 7%, Kroger at 6%, Sam's Club at 5%, and Publix at 4%. At less than 3% market share are Target, Heeb, Safeway, Whole Foods, and Dollar General. What was the percentage of Costco? Seven. Seven percent. Uh, Walmart has a demanding lead. Twenty-five percent of all groceries in the country are purchased at Walmart. Brody is our winner. Brody, where is the five hundred dollar donation? Um, I won, either? but Giannis is going to tell you where the money's going. <laughs> <Okay. out. laughs> no, no, I want you to choose it though, mm -hmm. and then I can no, tell no, you. No, I. It. I mean, we talked about getting some money to them just a couple days ago. Oh, we did. Yeah, remember you called me about sending the thing down there. Oh, I was wondering yeah, if you were gonna yeah, if you yeah. could drive it down. Yeah, yeah. Well, old Stevie Reed's gonna be up here oh, guiding, good. so he's gonna good. drive that thing. So down. where are you guys gonna donate to? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming, Chester. <laughs> Don't be coy. Uh, the we've talked about. I've actually given money when I won a long, long time ago uh -huh. uh, to the veil. I don't know if they have a name, but it's basically saving some. There's a ha chunk of habitat, twenty acres, uh, in right, almost dead smack center of the town of Vail, Colorado, right off of Interstate seventy. Which it doesn't serves, sound like much, but it it's doesn't like... sound like much. But it is the lifeblood winter range of this herd that numbers of about a hundred bighorns in the Gore Range, and uh, I happen to get, be lucky enough to hunt there a couple of years ago for a sheep. And uh, anyways, the town of Vail had to go through a lot, a big long process to actually condemn the land mm -hmm. so they could buy it and have Vail Resorts not develop it and turn it into employee housing. And they finally settled on a number and they're going to be able to buy it for, I, I forget exactly how many million, but they still need a couple million to uh, make up the difference. And so by the time you hear this, they'll already be a week into the fundraising. But um, Google search Vail Bighorn and uh, you can probably find a place, find a way we'll to figure it out. It. So, is there optimism yeah. that it's going to happen? Very optimistic okay. they're going to make it happen. Yeah. Wild Sheep Foundation is in on it. If, if that land were to get developed, there's a very good chance that that herd would just blink out because mm. they just don't have anywhere to go in the winter. Mm -hmm. Everything, all the other winter habitat has already been developed. $500 going their way. Well done, Brody. So close. Thanks, to Brody. The perfect game. It's going to happen yet this year. I feel like it's right there. Join us next time for more Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins.